direct energy deposition process. So the, the direct energy deposition process enables the creation of parts by melting material as it is being deposited. So in the previous methods we have seen various additive manufacturing methods and uh, this process is quite different from all the other process. Here it says it is the process which enables the creation of parts by melting material as it is being deposited. So this process you can actually uh, understand or you can uh, just uh, visualize the welding process. So even the welding process uh, happens in the same way wherein the electrode is taken and that electrode is melted because of the electricity which is being passed or the current which is being passed and the metal is melted because of the heat supplied and a molten pool is formed. When the molten pool is formed, the material is deposited so that while solidification, it gets filled in all the area wherever it has to be filled. So this also happens in the similar manner. So it can, it is predominantly used for metal powders. Though this process can be used for the polymers, ceramics and metal matrix composites, since it is used predominantly for metal powders, this process is also called as direct energy deposition process or it is also called as metal deposition technology. So this is how it can be called as and this process is widely used for repair and maintenance of structural parts. You need to keep a note on this. So all the other process that we have discussed until now that is the six process or the six categories of additive manufacturing we have already discussed in my previous video lectures. If you are not able to see just uh, click on these cards which is being shown in the top right hand of the uh, of your screen and click on that you can uh, it will take you to the previous video lectures that I have uh, explained. So this is for maintenance and fabrication of the structural parts. That is one of the important uh, thing in direct energy deposition. So all the other processes were, were used to create the parts but this is for fabrication and repairing the parts. So generally the equipment consists of the deposition head which is uh, an integration of energy source and you can see a uh, powder feed nozzles here. So the powder feed, there are two powder feed uh, nozzles here. So through the nozzles, either the metal powders can be fed or a thin wire can also be fed. So both are possible in direct energy deposition technique. And then you have uh, the material which is being fabricated or repaired or wherever the material has to be deposited. You can have that particular part which is kept on a platform. And uh, in some cases, you can also have inert gas tubing and uh, Sensors might also be present to just sense the amount of heat which is being generated or produced in that particular area. And then uh, the direction or the deposition head which is uh, depositing the powder feed and also the laser beam. It, it is a 4 or 5 axis machine which can be uh, moved in 4 or 5 direction. So that is how the setup of this particular machine is. We will just see now what exactly the process steps are and uh, how the process takes place. So the deposition technique, direct energy deposition technique has these uh, steps to be followed and as I told you the first step is uh, the deposition head is mounted on the 4 or 5 axis arm which moves around the fixed object. The object which has to be uh, deposited uh, on, the material which has to be deposited on the material will be uh, placed on the platform and then the material is deposited from the nozzle onto existing surfaces of the object. So that is how the material is deposited and then uh, the material is either provided in wire or powder form. I told you there are two nozzles. These are the nozzles here. If you can just see uh, the powder feeder as well as the nozzle which can which is used to shield the gas. So it can be either in the powder form or wire which is passed and then a laser CO2 laser is supplied through another uh, nozzle so that uh, heat is generated and because of the heat generated the powder which is in the form of uh, the metal which is in the form of powder melts and it gets deposited on the uh, material and while the deposition head moves away from the deposited material slowly it gets it gets solidified so the material is melted using the laser electron beam or, or plasma arc upon deposition so further material is added layer by layer so as it solidifies what happens the deposition uh, head moves one layer above uh, i mean the thickness, one layer thickness, whatever it is there, it moves just upwards and then 
it is ready to add new material so repairing our critical new material features on the existing object so this is how the direct energy deposition process takes place now there is a small video just to show you how exactly the direct energy deposition technique works and how it is carried out so that you will be able to understand very clearly just look at the uh, powder which is being flown through the pipes and then nozzle so the fabrication uh, taking place onto a previously built part so generally the uh, materials or the parts made up of uh, uh, ferrous and non ferrous materials can also be used for this for fabrication purposes so this is about direct energy deposition process we'll see uh, what are the advantages disadvantages and applications it has uh, the one of the important advantage of this process is it is capable of producing denser parts all the previous categories of additive manufacturing uh, could not be able to produce denser parts uh, because uh, most of them were uh, manufactured by the powders of the metal and it, it deposited uh, just by layer or layer by layer but this can actually produce uh, denser parts because of the fusion taking place uh, and it allows directional solidification which enhances microstructural features of the components so directional solidification takes place because uh, once the uh, nozzle uh, deposits the metal powder and then uh, it is moving in one direction so the directional solidification takes place so slowly so that actually helps in uh, improving the microstructural features of the components and then it is utilized effectively for repairing and refurbishing components like turbine blades crankshaft bearings so all the parts which are heavy which that can be used to uh, refurbish or repair in complex areas so by using this particular process that, that is one of the advantage the disadvantages are it, the process is time consuming the components have poor resolution and surface finish so it does not concentrate much on the resolution and the surface finish also and then in this process uh, limited material use and it requires more research to further advance the process into a more mainstream positioning so there has to be a research which has to be conducted on the usage of uh, more metal powders so that is one of the disadvantage it has as of now the applications are it can be used for repairing the air aircraft frames and structures refractory metal components and then in ballistic material tooling repair and reconditioning of reconditioning and also in the marine propulsion so these are some of the important uh, applications of uh, the direct energy deposition technique so i hope you have understood well